And let's bring in Michael Waldman, president of the nonpartisan Brennan Center for Justice, for more on this. Michael, thanks for being here. You know, some election officials are voicing frustration that only eight cases of threats have resulted in charges so far. How does that compare to the number of reported threats related to elections? Well, ele <clears throat> election officials all over the country of both parties have let us know that they are facing physical threats, verbal threats, and have fears for uh, their own ability to do their job. Law enforcement does need to step up. There have only been seven prosecutions. But we have reason to think that in recent weeks, uh, police and prosecutors and uh, law enforcement at all levels have finally begun to step up. They need to continue to do this. The bottom line is both election workers and voters have reason to think that this election will be safe, that they will be able to engage in this basic act of democracy um, without fear, and that the things that people are afraid of are in fact illegal. Even the kinds of intimidation we saw in Arizona last week, federal judge has ruled uh, is illegal and, and uh, amounts to intimidation. The tools exist to protect our elections. Now, you've been monitoring this kind of activity throughout the country. Are there particular areas where you're seeing, uh, you know, heightened problems? And what are some examples of what's happening? Well, this thing in Arizona where people were going to the uh, drop boxes where voters legitimately drop off their mail ballots, um, where, where uh, intimidators were going with guns to, quote, look for the fraud, um, that's pretty unusual. That was really the most extreme example we've seen, and we're not seeing it repeated. Uh, we do worry that people will make trouble at the polling places. Uh, we also want to make sure that there are not election officials who have come to do this work, but who themselves believe these fantasy conspiracy theories um, who, who will uh, cause problems on election day. But the main thing we want to make sure of is that people know that if there are problems, that they have the ability to get them solved. One eight six six hour vote is the national hotline for election protection. If people have any problem, you know, uh, it's often the case you'll hear people say, "Oh, this year we're going to send all these people to the polls to stop stop misconduct," and very often nothing really ever happens. Uh, we don't know if that's going to be the case this time, but if there is trouble between law enforcement and the 866 Our Vote hotline, most voters should not notice anything different from any other year. Now, as you say, you know, emotions are often high around elections. We do hear um, notions of this. Uh, it doesn't always come to fruition. So does it feel in the lead up to these elections that this year is different from previous years? Well, you're right that, you know, a lot of times once the last fundraising once the last fundraising email goes out then, they, then nothing happens because it's a lot of puffery but uh i would say that what is different and this is what the president in part was talking about yesterday is we've never had a political movement led by a former president denying the legitimacy of our elections claiming an effect that american democracy is rigged and a fraud uh it, despite all the evidence uh, despite the, the the strong evidence that our elections are very safe, very secure, and very accurate. Um, it's a new thing in our country. It's not a good thing. And I think people from all across the political spectrum need to stand up and say American democracy is something we're proud of. We're not going to tolerate anybody who's against American democracy, whether it's a foreign malevolent force like Putin or people in our own country who very cynically in, in most instances use this kind of thing for their own political gains. Most of these politicians, they know better. Even the ones who are denying the election, they know it's nonsense. Uh, they're misleading their own followers, and that's an extra badge of shame, I would say. Michael, do you have any concerns about election integrity? Are you monitoring for any potential fraud? It, the, the kinds of things that people always have been worried about uh, in recent years, in particular, is uh, cybersecurity. Um, we know that in 2016, for example, Russia uh, did uh, hack into uh, not just the servers of the one of the political parties, but tried to get into the voter registration rolls. There's been a lot of effort made to harden those systems to improve the computer security. That has been the main worry. The kind of thing that people might uh, might worry about 
is really va vanishingly rare. You are more likely statistically to be struck by lightning in this country than to commit voter fraud. It is vanishingly rare. And we saw that after the 2020 election with all the screaming and screeching by the former president. There were 63 cases br brought before the courts and 62 of the courts said there's no evidence here. We're throwing it out. It's, it's, it's a lot of hot air. And again, it does, I would say, a real disservice to, uh, to democracy because the real problem that many people are facing are new barriers to voting, new little ways to make it harder for people to vote. Uh, we saw in Texas during the primaries, tens of thousands of ballots being thrown out uh, disproportionately of black and Latino voters um, because of some supposed problem with the signature on the ballot. Those are the bigger problems, the real problems that people face. All right, Michael Waldman from the Brennan Center. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.